Hi, I'm Jason, and I teach non-technical people, like myself, how to build apps without writing one line of code. Today, I have kids sleeping upstairs, so you're going to get my late night FM DJ voice. Today, we're building an Airbnb clone on a tool called Bubble. Pretty stoked. Let's get started. We're looking at a blank canvas in Bubble. Good place to start. Let's actually take a look at Airbnb though. Get some inspiration. Beautiful site. Ours won't be quite as nice, but uh, it's the effort that counts. Um, let's go over some of the functionality though that we're going to work on today. Number one, we're going to have a home page like this with search. We're going to be able to put in a location, a check in date, a checkout date. Add some guests, just me tonight. And uh, then we're going to build a page that looks something like this, a search results page. Going to have properties listed on the left that are near the location that we put in. Maybe we'll add a map. Um, we'll also need a property page, which we can do today. So if you click on one of these, the property page would look something like this, where you have property images and more details about, about the property and the option to book it. So the first thing we need to think about is what types of data do we need? If we go back to our home page here, just scrolling through, I mean, one type of data we'll need is a property list, list of properties. Um, pretty obvious one and another one we'll probably need is a bookings list because there could be many bookings per one property um, some others we might need are users a user could be a host or a renter and maybe even reviews uh, you can have many reviews per one property so we'll need a list of those as well uh, so let's start building that database I'm gonna go back over to bubble and click on the data section here and we'll start with properties. Uh, so I'm going to build a, add a new type here for property. And let's head back to our Gravenhurst. Check out this find here. Uh, some of the fields we'll need are name, which is this. Um, number of guests, number of bedrooms, number of bathrooms. We'll probably need a price per night. Um, maybe a rating, number of reviews, description, lots of stuff here. Uh, so let's start adding those in. Our name will be a text field. Uh, we had description in there which will also be a text field. Um, what else did we have? We had the uh, location, which is important. Where is this place? And here we can actually use this geographic address for location. Um, we need number of beds, this field type is just going to be a number, number of bathrooms, also a number, price per night, mm. a couple more if we look here, if we scroll down you'll see uh, there's this here. What does this place offer? Free parking, backyard. Most of these are yes or no. Does it have a hair dryer or does it not have a hair dryer? Does it have a patio or not? Uh, so we'll add two of those to start. Maybe we can add more later if we want. But two that I can think of is AC. Usually when I have a field that's either yes or no, I start it with is so that I know. Then I'll choose yes, no. So is it is there AC? Yes or no? 
that's what's going to go in that field and we'll do one more um, Wi-Fi very important how am I supposed to do these bubble videos if I don't have Wi-Fi also a yes no cool I think that is good to start we can add our other data types later because I want to start building so let's go to design so let's start on the home page We have a nice image here in the background. Uh, maybe we'll find one for ours. I'm going to start with this uh, this location search and check in, check out. Um, this, ab this ability to search for a property or a stay. That's what we're going to work on right now. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do here is grab a group. And um, we're going to make this, actually we're going to make this uh, maybe like 320 should be good size and we'll make it uh, the full uh, height here of our page and we're going to center it so I'm going to put that right in the center because I'm going to build inside of this here um, next thing actually I'm going to turn on um, show element borders so I can see that there and we're gonna call that group group center and one more thing I'm gonna do to start here is to just put a background color so I can see a little more of what I'm doing because if I look at Airbnb here if we put a background on that's dark we might have white captions That should work all right we need a location input and we can use a search box for that so if you look on the left side here in input forms there's one called search box and there's some cool functionality here where it's already built in to bubble um, where you can choose geographic places here and that'll let you search for cities or addresses um, and we're just going to change the placeholder here to where are you going all right kind of similar to to this one um, and if we preview that you can see that I can search here for Gravenhurst or any other address or place. One more thing I want to do is put a caption that actually says that that's the location. So I can use a text. Where is that text here? I can use this and we're going to call this location. And I already have some styles set up. Uh, so I have a white one here that I'm going to use. But you could go to the styles section here to set up your own styles. We're not going to go over that today though. So we'll throw the location on there. And next up we need a check-in date and check-out date. Um, so I can use a date time picker for that in the input forms here um, so we're going to make this a little smaller and we are going to just update the style and throw a caption on there <clears throat> uh, we'll just call it check in. And we need check out. So I can actually just. If I hold control or command, I can duplicate that. Let's call this check out. And here we'll call this daytime picker. 
check out. This one was daytime picker check in. It's good to name these so we can uh, find them later. And this one was, we'll just call this actually location. All right, so we got the location, we got the check in, we got the check out. Now we need guests. So we're going to make a little box kind of like this one. Um, we'll do adults and children. Um, we'll leave out infants for now, but we could always add that in later if we needed to. So I'm going to put in another group. Throw it here. One thing actually I'll show you is if I just select group here, I can just draw it in. That makes it a little easier. I can draw it right where I want it. And I'm going to put this underneath. I'm going to give this a white background. I kind of like this here. I see how that's white. Uh, so I'm going to remove this default style I have here and add a flat white color. There we go. <clears throat> Make it nice and round too. Nice and round. It's looking good. Um, so we'll need one more group I'll throw in there just so I can have a bit of a margin. And don't forget to name these. This one we'll name, what is this, group guests. Group guests margin. This one I think um, we'll put we'll put a 20 pixel margin on to start. See how that goes. So here I can just say x and y is 20 and 20. And then I'm just gonna guess here. You can see this is 22. It's almost there. There's 20. And that's about that's about 20 there. Now I'm gonna throw in a couple of text objects here. Adults, we'll have adults, we'll have children. Cool. Now if we head back over here, adults, children, and this allows you to add plus or minus, and you can increase or decrease the number of adults or children that you are searching with or booking for. So let's set up something similar. I'm going to grab an icon and we'll uh, throw it right around here. This is going to be a minus. Cool. And uh, we'll need two of those. And we'll need a plus on the other side. Now we need a number in the middle. So I'm just going to grab a text icon here, or a text element, I mean, and throw it here. And um, I'll start this at zero. And let's call it text adult count. Text children count. All right, so we have location, we have check in, we have check out. And we have adult and children. Now, how do we get that number to go up and down? Because right now it's not doing anything, it's just showing zero. Well, one thing we can do here is use a custom state. Now, a custom state is a way to hold temporary data that doesn't exist in our database. So we need to store this number somewhere, but not necessarily in our database. 
Uh, so that's what you can use a custom state for. So what I'm going to do is on the page, this is my main index page here. I'm going to put those custom states here. If I click on the eye, I can say add new custom state. So we'll need one for adult count, which will be a number. Default value zero. And we'll need one more called children count. So those, now that those states are set, we're going to start a workflow that happens when you click on these plus or minus buttons. Uh, so if you click plus, then it's going to add one. If you click minus, it's going to minus one. So let's do that. If I click on the plus, we can start here. I'm going to say start edit workflow. So I'm going to look for the state action there, set state of an element. And the element is index. That's where I put the custom states. And here they are, adult count, children count. So this one, we're going to add one to whatever the current count is. So if I go to index again, here I can find my states again. So whatever it is currently, we are going to plus one. Cool. Let's try that out. Uh, so now I got the little finger cursor here. Doesn't seem to be working. It's because this isn't actually showing our custom state yet. This is just showing zero. So let's go back and this will actually be dynamic data. We're going to put find that custom state again, idle count. And uh, this as well will be dynamic data, child count. So let's try that one more time. See now when I press the plus, the number goes up. Uh, we haven't set up the other three though. Uh, so I'm going to do that now, and I will BRB. Plus, minus, plus, minus, works great. All right, let's get rid of this gray. This gray is kind of ugly. Um, we're going to throw an image on here. Cool. So... We need a search button. We'll work on that next. And I already set up a style for the coral, Airbnb coral. We'll call this search. So what's the search gonna do? Uh, one, it's going to send us to our search results page. So that if we go head back to Airbnb, once we choose where we want to go, <clears throat> when we want to check in, eight guests, and we press search, it sends us here. So this is what we want to do. We want to come here. So heading back over to Bubble. We'll set up a workflow here and the action is going to be go to page because we're going to go to a different page now destination we don't have a page yet for search results so we're going to create a new one call it search results and there it is now when we go there we need to um set some parameters on the page. So we're going to use this function right here. Sorry, this one here. Um, we want to send the location. We want to send the start date and the end date and the adult count and the child count. Everything that the user selected on the previous page, we want to send over to this new page so we know how to search our results or search our properties. Uh, so here I'm going to add a few parameters. One's going to be location. This is going to come from our search box. And we're going to keep going here. We need a start date, which is the check-in date time picker. 
we need the end date which is the checkout daytime picker we need the adult count which is on the index index page it's the custom state we made and we need a children count again custom state on the index page so let's try that out We're stick with our grave and her selection choose a date in the future here and search now this takes us to a new page this page is blank at this point because we haven't built it yet but one thing one thing I want to show you here is the parameters that we sent are here in the URL location equals grave and hers you can see that start date equals November 27th there's end date and if you keep going there's adult count and there's children count uh, so that's where those parameters are sent and then when we build this page we're going to extract those values from the URL and uh, use them in our search results. All right, I'm going to stop here for this video because the kids are stirring. I can hear them upstairs. But uh, tune into the next one where we're going to be working on the search results page uh, that we just talked about and the property page. I appreciate you watching. If you liked the video, please subscribe. Tune into the next one. Also, feel free to leave a comment with your questions or video requests. Thanks, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.